Hello, this is Jim, W4JBM. Wanted to give a quick update on the Hewlett Packard uh, HP 200 CD audio signal generator that uh, I've been working on and restoring. Uh, when I originally restored it, or the original work I did on it was uh, to replace the three filter capacitors in the power supply. And uh, at that point, it had some low frequency, very low frequency, like uh, a tenth of a hertz or a fifth of a hertz uh, amplitude modulation remaining. And uh, so I wanted to do a little bit more work on it. Uh, there were three capacitors I wasn't able to replace originally. There's a unpolarized electrolytic capacitor in the output stage. It's 100 microfarads uh, at 100 volts. And I didn't have anything like that laying around. And then up in the, uh, the front end, and kind of the A-stable multivibrator stage, uh, the, the actual oscillator stage, there were two 0.5 microfarad capacitors. They're rated 400 uh, volts on the one that the ones that were originally in there, but they really don't see anything. Of, it seems like it's. I, I looked at the schematic and the voltage measurements. It's something like uh, 100 or 150. So I got some 250 volt 0.5 or actually 0.47 microfarad capacitors and replaced those. Um, so now all the all the major capacitors, everything except any of the the discs or the the trimmer capacitors, have been replaced, uh, and the the output has stabilized. I don't I don't see the um, the amplitude modulation uh, taking place anymore, and uh, it looks gives a, a reasonably clean output, um, which I'm happy with. There's still occasionally some noise, and I think it's from what I have read uh, in in doing some research on these. Uh, I suspect really one of three things. One is that the, uh, the output uh, attenuator or level uh, uh, resistor, variable resistor, um, could have issues. It's a dual gang 250 uh, kilo ohm uh, resistor. I may replace that if I happen to come across one. Uh, another thing that I've seen mentioned is that uh, this it uses a pair of light bulbs like I mentioned in the first video uh, to stabilize the output um, when there's voltage fluctuations or or other type like the thermal changes uh, the, the light bulbs were a, kind of an HP innovation and uh, provided a very stable output I have read that if you don't actually power up the light bulbs and, and like every few few years or few decades uh, actually power them up um, and uh, light them up with with the full voltage rated I think 120 volts and maybe 240 volts I'm not sure which one uh, actually but they're you know they're they're high fairly high voltage um, light bulbs they uh, the way they're they're in there and, and used in the circuit they see a few volts at most and they don't light there's not even a dim glow uh, even if you turn the lights off uh, so they're they're used in a way where they don't see the kinds of currents or heat that they uh, are, are designed to handle. And I've read that if you don't power them up and uh, actually let them shine, so to speak, uh, every once in a while, that that can cause some noise. Um, honestly, what I'm seeing is not uh, not bad enough to where I'm willing to, to risk potentially burning out one of the light bulbs. Um, and then the third thing, um, so the, the, there's the output rheostat, there's the, uh, the light bulbs, and the third thing, uh, that I've read is that sometimes some of the older tubes can, uh, can can get a little flaky and cause a little bit of noise here and there. So, uh, and and again, I'm, it's really not worth uh, to me. This is it's more of a novelty. It's not something I plan to use day in and day out. Um, so it's pretty much where I uh, I want it to be. Um, I do the 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 person that had this before me actually. It's it's pretty well done. But this uh, there's just a web strap. Uh, handle on top that's been made uh, I guess where the leather strap originally went. I've also got on the the uh, Tektronix 310A oscilloscope that I'm working um, there's a leather handle that's in pretty bad shape so at some point I'm gonna have to figure out how to, to make handles. I actually like the way that this one's done. I just would use uh, a color other than orange like maybe if I can find some uh, of the black webbing uh, and then um, they're called uh, Chicago bolts that have the, uh, they're used sometimes on gun slings that uh, uh, are two pieces. This one actually has a nut on the bottom, um, but there's, there's some that are smooth on both sides that uh, I'll probably look for. And uh, again, the output's looking good. Um, probably won't paint the case or anything on this one for now. I may go through and do more restoration. Right now I'm just trying to, to work my way through 
a lot of projects that have been sitting here on the bench for uh, for a long time. And uh, this one actually hasn't been here a long time. This showed up uh, from the estate of a silent key uh, a month or so ago. But uh, the uh, the overwhelming pile of uh, of projects uh, sitting in the basement has has kind of got me motivated to. Uh, uh, to crank through and, and try and repair as many as I can. The ones that I can't repair, uh, either part them out, build something new out of them, or uh, find them a home for somebody that maybe maybe is looking for parts. Uh, and at some point, I obviously could stand to uh, to clean up the uh, the workbench a little bit too. Um, anyway, that's the update. Uh, that's probably it for this one for now. Uh, in the future, I may do a little bit more work on it, and, and if so, I'll uh, I'll post a video on that. But uh, not bad for a, uh, this would be around a 50 year old, uh, oscillator. Um, and considering all things considered, uh, the, the dial operates smoothly and you can see the, the frequency changing as, uh, as I do that. Um, and the output attenuator, I'll change the level a little bit. You can, sometimes you'll see, there you see a little bit of jumping around, but it settles in pretty quick. Uh, and then one of the other uh, tests that they uh, have you do as part of the alignment procedure is actually switch bands and see how fast it, uh, it locks onto the new frequency. And uh, it's supposed to settle in, uh, I believe it's less than six seconds is what the rating is. And, and you can see this thing, it settles in uh, uh, within one or two seconds, uh, which is not bad either. So, anyway, that's it. I uh, appreciate you watching and look forward to, uh, to putting some more videos up as I get through some of the uh, other projects here on the bench. Thanks. And have a great day.